Hello and welcome to ESPN Quick Info video cast and really excited with my guest today because I've always had this desire to ask him more than 3 questions. Because generally when I've had a chat with this gentleman it's been after a game or in between innings and he's had some fascinating things to talk about but only 3 questions not beyond that. So very excited to have uh, Ravi Chandran Ashwin on the show and we can go more than just three questions Ashwin so take your time and welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Sanjay. I look forward to it. Unprecedented times, but surely we yeah. can have a chat about the game. What was your first sort of connection with the sport? When that did that happen? Do you remember cricket and your connection, and you thought, ah, this is something I like to do. My my uh, oldest or the first memory that's fresh in my head is when uh, the launch of cable TV happened. You know, uh, Star Star came into existence and. Uh, it was like my father is a big cricket fanatic and uh, any match he can, even now if he goes by on his bike he still goes by by on the bike uh, then he goes and he watches a game he just sit down watch for a while and then come back and give us insights even even when we are uh, when we work at the academy my father uh, takes a keen interest in the game he goes there talks to the coaches sometimes a little old school but uh, we try and we try and uh, have a conversation sometimes we fight about uh, the views that he has also so uh, he is he is my oldest memory of what this game and i associate the game with him because uh, he used to have this old cane chair in that time and he our our house was the first house in the entire locality to get a star channel you know uh, it was quite expensive expensive in terms of it seemed like a luxury for most of them and people would pick back on the fact and uh, the 1992 world cup uh, is my oldest memory and that's my first memory of watching india on live screen Uh, with that uh, retro uniform we used to play in the terrace i uh, we lived in a family where my uh, in fact my one of my cousins uh, was a far far more talented cricketer than i was uh, we used to play in the terrace me my dad and a couple of my cousins and the neighbors and all that on the terrace which i can't I, i can't seem to understand how we played on that terrace you know it seemed like a big space then probably we were all smaller men now father then sort of coerced you into playing the game or uh, was there any kind of subconscious sort of Uh, pressure or the influence that he wanted you to become a cricketer, or it just happened. On the, on the, quite, quite the contrary. Because my, my okay. dad was, uh, my dad, I don't know, somehow didn't strike him that I should be playing cricket in a very structured manner. He used to just allow me. I think in his head somewhere is my granddad was. Uh, he used to be a wrestler, so my granddad was very much. Again, my, my dad lost his mother very early, so it was like more about protecting the family. And my dad had a sister, so we were pretty closely knit. And my granddad was. Uh, against playing any sport not just for his son but also for his grandson and so on and so forth because he believed it couldn't make a career and uh, from that perspective my dad was more about allowing me to play in the neighborhood and the locality in the first place just for fun yeah uh, so just fun or even play the game i don't know what he had at the back of his mind but one fine day when i was 8 years old i think it was my mom who said enough enough i've had enough of your guys fighting with the uh, granddad and fighting with the neighborhood ball lost who should buy the next tennis ball etc etc i uh, put my son in a uh, in a very uh, structured coaching clinic so that yeah. was the initiation of it and one one friday my mom said this and the next uh, on saturday we went to the cricket academy and wow that's where it began hmm. and when did sort of the penny drop that you know this can be my profession i can play for india and you know when did that happen it, I, i think a lot of things in life i feel is an accident and uh, I swear. My, yeah my, my cricket is a glorified accident i would think because um for a very very long time uh, a lot of people around me my parents uh, my well wishers people who watched me bat uh, all of them thought that if it, i i would go on to become a big batsman uh, and uh, like my my career was centered around ashwin the batsman you know um, in fact i i didn't believe until i started bowling that i would go on to play for india uh, because uh, Uh, watching, watching game on, you know, watching like you said, watching the Indian team uh, mm-hmm. in, the, in the mid 90s to late 90s and probably the early 90s. I remember a lot of those games. It was excruciatingly painful, Sanjay. And I'm sorry for yeah. saying that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, because no, as as a child, I'm saying that. Uh, as a child, I uh, I had these classmates in school who were uh, constantly. Uh, a couple of my best friends were actually Aussie Aussie uh, supporters. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, whenever India lost the game going to school i just it just like tick me mm. the wrong side uh, i went mm. to school and there will be huge fights and i've been made to stand outside the class if for defending the indian team uh, you know mm. in the sense of we would be fighting and the teacher will catch us and throw all of us out of the class but yeah. then put you off the sport 
because of what was happening to the national cricket team uh, the batting <laughs> or was it a realization that you could actually play for india as a bowler and not, not so much as a uh, no uh, not so early uh, when i was in school maybe 12 13 i said i want to be go on, go on to play for india and maybe you know very wildest of fantasy dreams that maybe support sachin tendulkar in a way to bat you know those yeah. sort of carries king in the head dream yeah. um but what happened later was when i when i got injured and i came back into the game i didn't want to have anything to do with medium pace bowling i was a medium pace bowler so uh i was just batting and then this uh, 2001 series happened where uh, harbhajan singh was an absolute uh, sensation in the country yeah, and yeah. so uh, again it was my mom who said uh, i was a big shane Wan- shane one fan uh she said why you stand she came to watch one of those games and i was batting and i think i might have gotten out early and she said look i've kept watching the entire game so what do you do you want to bowl uh, what are you standing in the field for I, what did i come for and then he and she said i obviously i i told her i mean she knows about my hip injury and all that so she said why don't you bowl spin uh, it seems like much more easier on the body uh, and i was like <laughs> obviously a uh, son then and i did think she was right and i started bowling leg breaks uh, then i found this fascination of bowling leg breaks and off breaks like sachin used to do then uh, and slowly but surely i became one of the integral parts of uh, school cricket then. and uh, in fact i used to bowl off spin starting from the 30th over to the 50th over and concede 20 runs So there was a friend of mine, uh, Ashwin, who was in the Mumbai Ranji team as a batsman. Now, in that time, wasn't easy. Next season, he quit the game so that he could focus on his studies because he came from a family that was educated, typical corporate background, and he's one of the top bankers now. So when I look at you, I just wonder whether that kind of pressure uh, wasn't there. Obviously, your mother said, you know, carry on playing. Education is fine. You know. We'll- Worry about but that later. My mother actually asked me to take a pure science group, and I went into 11th standard. And she said, "You must aspire to be doing medicine." And I, I was like, you know, biology was never my my cup of tea. And I said, "Look, I'm even contemplating taking computer science because you want me to do engineering, but medicine is out of reach. It's not in my, it's not even in my, you know, peripheral vision." But uh, something in her told me that I must be a professional degree holder. You know, she wanted me to be an, and that never changed. uh the in in the in the kind of age group uh, era that i grew up it was the early 2000s where i passed out of school and the boom was all about it you know uh, so mm-hmm. it was like if you didn't do engineering you didn't belong and uh, mm-hmm. um, especially coming from the community that i come from and the part of the part of india where i come from education is a is a must and it some sometimes i feel it's unnecessary where you have the social level of uh, them bothering about what people might say so i just want to on that same subject you know you because you observe uh, things you know you're not just uh, wearing blinkers what is this with uh, spinners from south and cricketers and spinners especially more spinners coming from south of india and all of them having degrees engineering degrees and so well educated how does that happen so they are basically in a way nerds or you know studious but then excel in a very physical sort of skill dominated uh, area how how is that i mean it's a completely two uh, ends of the spectrum but you know you have so many instances prasanna anil kumble srinath you said and there are more and you know mostly from south of india look i i, I think doing the engineering degree is more of a social evil i think <laughs> it is not i don't think okay. it has uh, much in terms of nicely degree. put yeah Uh, but i think there could be a connection in terms of the resolve that you have developed doing both uh, you have to you have to do a certain sense of workload to be able to achieve, achieve or manage both of them uh, it requires a, a large amount of discipline and uh, i think when, once you do once you finish off with engineering you are you know there are there were times when i was in my engineering college my college is about 36 kilometers out of the uh, city and i used to take a bus at 5:45 in the morning which is my college bus and my days were my days were never ending because at 5:45 i used to uh, start and if i had to come back for practice by about 3:30 uh, which i would never to never get on time to i will always come by 4 o'clock i had to travel 36 kilometers and no habitat you know when i did it i used to actually take um, vans that were transporting tomatoes uh, get on them get to another bus depot catch a bus and change another bus and walk inside iit for about say one or two kilometers or probably take a lift and then get to the ground change up and then practice come back home and then catch up on whatever i had missed in college and then that's it and you will just so basically you, fun was on the ground right and this was more out of the, and and in fact there was some sort of a sadistic streak to it because whenever i had to go to play a game uh, i had to miss something in college and i knew whenever i went back to college it would be extremely uncomfortable 
uh and i would be i'd be able, i'd be made to feel it uh, not necessarily because people were like that but i also think getting a professional degree from a top college is needs it deserves something so hmm. they were right in what they did i was right in what i did but it was it was the journey that i picked so uh, this is perennially how the days used to be and uh, i remember going on going to colleges for getting on lab days on sundays uh, the same thing used to be a sunday so I, there were times when i forgot what day of the week it was and uh, there there used to be times when i was completely physically and mentally exhausted that i would turn back on my father and mother and say it's because of you that i'm having to do this are you are you actually in one of the last of these kind of uh, players because you know the landscape of uh, cricket is changing i think so. i i yeah, yeah you could be one of the last right with an engineering degree and you know having that kind of a background and then playing for india ipl 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 wasn't even in in the fictitious imagination when i was uh, enrolling for engineering so uh, mm. uh, nowadays parents are more like even if my son doesn't go on to play for india it's fine but if it's it's okay if he goes on to play uh, for an ipl team you know yeah, yeah. the perspective has changed so much uh, so yeah. so uh, see change of how people are viewing it in fact uh, a decade ago and decade now later things have changed so much i feel like i'm yeah. the older generation there are there are a major set of parents and people who are prepared to take up sport as a career and which yeah. is great uh, you know yeah i think uh, i i'm going to take some credit for that as a parent and our generation because we sort of were uh, shackled by our parents fixed deposit and put money in the fixed deposit take a public sector employment but as we sort of you know reach the age of 40 50 our kids are growing up so we gave them a platform a very sort of strong steady india change so there are all these amazing kids who are toppers in academic but will you know going to art um yeah. i i still feel if we can garner sport and art in a much larger way as as a community which there's a great opportunity in front of us right now uh, hmm. you know the, uh, the and ashwin the, is going to do it i don't know you see ashwin i don't know you from close quarters but from a distance you get an idea i think if there is one person who will go and pursue all this is ashwin that i can't see you after quitting cricket just putting your feet up and you know relaxing you'll be into something doing these kind of things if you would be our visionary in these areas no it's very it's very difficult for me to sit aside i think i've taken after my mom uh, to a large degree for me to stay occupied and keep keep giving something for my brain to work at and something where i can serve people in terms of doing a business and employing people that's one of my largest dreams and uh, online coaching currently also yeah <laughs> quarantine time so you have not quarantined your activities in that way you're still so you've got a pretty restless mind that will always keep doing something I realized that it was so much interesting so fascinating to be able to pass on knowledge and teach okay. and uh, I personally have take a lot of pride in it I've been doing this for the last 10 years even in cricket and I think my cricket went up because of that okay. uh, because I think when you pass on knowledge there are a lot more questions that you can uh, ask yourself and there are so many questions that you get young kids coming and asking to you so you have to put your head to uh, use and sometimes you feel there have been so many times not just sometimes where i felt like oh my god what an idiot i have been i have not been able to see this simple fact and get back to the uh, what i need to be doing in a game i i think it's going to have a sea of change and uh, even the coaching mm. industry where people are thinking it's a physical sport you got to go out there and play to actually mm. thinking how much more you can do in reclusive isolation Mm, okay. uh, in terms of tapping into your tapping into your awareness into the into the game because mm. that's been one of my biggest theories how mm. how self aware you are you become that bigger a cricketer in your skill so it's about the yeah. subconscious mind you must be connecting a lot with rahul dravid i don't know how many conversations uh, you all have had actually i remember three of us meeting in a room but we won't share that talking cricket but rahul is the same you know it's about addressing the mind and the last few years when the pressure is immense and people like you you know who think rahul was a thinker and i used to worry a little because i was a thinker myself and i sort of almost self destructed as a player so that is something that i worried about rahul that he might overthink you know even at the dining table he's thinking about how he got out and you as well but you guys have managed to you know use the intelligence or the thinking nature to not to not be detrimental to to sport which can happen i'm i'm sure you are aware of sujit somos and the rookley for india I yeah think. yeah he is attacking also, yeah, top he's also part of the nca now in some uh, yeah, yeah. in some way but uh, i remember actually speaking to him he does his thing of uh, mentally training people helping people out and i found myself in a very uh, jigsaw puzzle sort of a zone about a year and a half maybe ago and i took some help from him and uh, uh, i find it so fascinating and i agreed upon a theory saying why do intelligent cricketers falter 
why do thinking cricketers falter because i have seen so many thinking cricketers and people who have the ability to think falter and why do sometimes cricketers who keep it extremely simple are sometimes very rudimentary end up being successful there is a fine line sanjay and somehow at a very nascent stage of my cricketing career i realized this uh, okay. that the advantage a thinking cricketer or the person who is able to put logical thinking to the game has is to be able to disconnect his mind from his subconscious mind you know uh, if you can disconnect it and allow them to functional independently i don't know if it sounds very uh, out of uh, theory yeah I, i'm going to simplify it you carry on make your point so yeah for me for me the mind and the subconscious mind are two extremely different yeah. uh, functionalities uh, your mind is used for logical thinking uh, it is yeah. used for planning it is used for decision making and all these sort of things whereas you can use your mind to train your subconscious mind to take over at some stage for example let me give an example of playing yeah. a game uh, a strategy is coming from the mind as i watch batsman or whatever it is it comes from the mind about what sort of lines lengths and what sort of plans i'm going to go about is in my mind what sort of fields i'm going to keep is in my mind what are my attacking options what are my non attacking options is in my mind but whereas to be able to execute all of whatever i'm thinking here comes from the subconscious mind so i need to be preparing my subconscious mind for training this which is exactly when i started what i started when i was 19 years old and from then on i have never looked back now you said there are these people who are very simple don't think much and let's take me as an example you know i used to be a thinker in fact you know when i was playing cricket i was focusing more on other people's technique and their bad bowling than than my own and i say a virendra seva very simple minded went out there and did his stuff and this is superbly i mean exceptional and there's somebody like me who thinks a lot and the complicates a fairly simple game in the end but i wonder whether the emotional angle comes in like rahul dravid ravichandran ashwin thinkers but there is an emotion which is which i call uh, sim- simply as confidence you know when i found people who have not quite made it i've realized that maybe there is a certain amount of intelligence which makes them skeptical about a lot of things and doesn't allow them to keep a mind that free and stay confident despite you know certain reverses so i've seen a lot of people you know just brush off failure and go in because they're not thinking too much while others who will be really sort of affected by failure let me, let me just simplify it like you're saying i'm finding avenues to simplify it let's say virendra seva gets out uh, lbw nipping back first ball of a game and he's bold or lbw whatever uh to to me virendra sehwag would tell himself that as an opening batsman you you are about to get a good ball any time you know uh i will still back my instincts i'm not going to think about it because i'm good enough i made two triple hundreds in my life yeah okay so basically he's told his subconscious mind to stay away from his thinking mind he's not thought about it but he is able to disconnect his subconscious mind to his relative mind. that's it is that uh, the intelligence of sehwag cricketing intelligence that is coming of- in- Okay. It's his way of dealing with it. But whereas, if that happened to me, I might be telling myself, "Okay, Andrew Flintoff or Harmison might be bowling the same ball second innings." And before he does that, I might hit that same ball, ask someone to deliver it, and play it fifty times, and tell my subconscious mind, "All is well." Wonderful. This actually started as an interview, but it has become a nice counselling session for myself. A bit too late <laughs> in my life yeah, as a retired. These, these, are, these are all my understandings. These are all. Yeah, all yeah, no, no. This is wonderful. IPL debut India debut in the same year is it just so it's, it's been a nice no 2009 IPL debut 2010 India debut. 2000 yeah more or less the same yeah, so yeah 2009 so, i came so, uh, would it be fair to say because i saw you the first time really i mean who uh, nobody watches first class cricket as much i don't think it was televised as well you had a good first class season to begin with then ipl came along and i am looking at this spinner think a spinner you know being temperamentally very strong tennis ball cricket may have helped in understanding all those nuances but tell us about this sort of track would it be fair to say that you were sort of almost icl t20s gift to test cricket because that happened to david warner as well in a way but you had first class performances but would you say that would be the case see uh, i never knew that ipl would come into the force and so for me it was all about uh, playing a lot of club cricket in chennai and doing those numbers for wickets and doing those numbers in terms of runs to be able to play uh, for tamil nadu you know so that's where everything had developed and that's how that's what club cricket gave me a zeal for excellence uh, my engineering college and club cricket together gave me that uh, so for me um, it was like uh, getting into the ipl was 
was mind boggling uh, because one day we we were we went to ahmedabad and my uh, balaji badri and myself we were sitting in the same room and watching uh, you know teams being bought and uh, there was like this uh, 50 60 million where uh, rajasthan royals had bought a franchise and i was like i went to badri and asked uh, what is 60 million how much is it really you know and obviously with all with, even despite knowing my math million is not something yeah used. yeah we are we deal in lakhs and crores so that was that was probably the first time in a long time that i was asking people what is how much is a dollar to a rupee you know uh, what is a dollar to a rupee how much does this money signify and then badri was like okay let me check ash i'm not entirely sure and we were having this discussion and teams were being bought and i was like the question in a couple of hours was like how do you get into these teams who picks you into these teams you know and i was very sure bala and badri will end up with a contract because they were like renowned names and i was no one i was actually a youngster who was coming through the ranks uh, but i knew it was a stage uh, it was an opportunity uh, so uh, this whole uh, drama that ensued before me being signed up for csk was uh, extremely uh, it, i i would say there was fate involved in it because it it looked like i would never land an ipl team and then it happened that kemplast in india cements was playing a finals game and uh, i happened to play for kemplast and i picked up wickets against india cements who were the eventual owners of csk so i picked up and i was a man of the match in the final and they called me the next day to their office and landed me a contract and that's how it began uh, so when it when it began uh, you know the 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 sales pitch to me was bb uh, the person who was there no more uh, so he is he is like he was in charge of csk and he he gives me the sales pitch of saying you know you'll be playing uh, you will be practicing with mutaya murlidhar and matthew hayden and all that he, he gave me that sort of a thing and for me it was not enamoring at all uh, in all honesty because i felt like uh, this was a stage for me it was not like i i did i definitely didn't come to take an autograph or a glove or uh, watch these people play but that's interesting that's basically your innate confidence which i don't know where it came from but you would have looked at that as a great stage to show your wares more than being intimidated in the company of those people no i mean, i didn't i didn't want to do anything with these people and talking to them and taking pride in taking a photo <laughs> and putting it on i mean there was no instagram or a twitter then that's a different mm. ball game uh, but uh, that was not what i was interested in uh, you know i wanted to first thing i wanted to see if i was measuring up if i was good enough to be along these side yeah. these pitches which yeah. i would know only if i bowled at them yeah. uh, that was point number 1 point number 2 was if in case i was good enough then i wanted the stage i wanted to belong here and this is this is my uh, thinking inside and that could come from my confidence or from how i had been ingrained in the last 4 5 years i don't think i was the same cricketer that i was before i finished my engineering i i yeah. became a completely different person when i finished my degree and had played first class cricket uh, having played first class cricket and doing all those numbers crazy numbers in the first couple of seasons i knew i belonged i was yeah. dismissing some of the best batsmen in indian cricket I got Amol Majumdar out. I got Wasim. And were you also able to tell yourself that you are not overestimating your own ability? Was there also another mind? I'm just saying. I'm just curious. Was there a skeptical mind also saying that you know because there have been friends of mine who kept playing forever, hoping to play for Mumbai, and I could see that they just didn't quite have that ability. So is there a monkey on your you know back that's telling you as you know you have a very high. estimation of yourself does that did that happen or you were able to also I'm look sure, at it from I'm sure yeah. people around me thought about thought thought like that about I'm very sure okay. they did uh, <laughs> but uh, it never crossed me I think it could have probably been the exuberance of youth that didn't tell me at all uh, but you know the flattening of the curve did happen as I played the IPL uh, okay. where where I felt the slap hard on my face of saying hey boss listen, listen you're not even here you can't even bowl uh, you know you can't even restrict people in a t20 game i actually thought bowling in a t20 game was much easier than bowling in a first class game uh, that that was my belief then bowling four overs and sometimes if there is another corner I, we played a sayed mustaq ali in 2008 where tamil nadu uh, won were the winners that year when nobody knew how t20 cricket uh, was going to pan out uh, and whenever i was under pressure i used to bowl a yorker i i see it was the courage of saying okay if i bowl the ball he will not hit me that was that was the plain confidence i had uh the skill behind it that's where i i go back to my uh, thing of saying subconscious training once yeah. you're slapped hard on your face by people showing you you know i can boss you uh, if that meant if that meant let's say a robin utapa i in my in 2010 robin and mark bowch taught me a very harsh lesson uh, yeah. i bowled 14 16 18 and 20th over at rcb uh, in yeah. bangalore uh, i didn't uh, that that youth in me never told me that this is a challenge it told me it, it it told me it was an opportunity to pick up wickets because it was the death and i didn't pick up wickets but i went for 40 runs you know uh, 40 45 runs and 
eventually i played i i got my team into a hole the very next game we went into a super over lost it i was out of the squad uh, it felt like a hard slap but sitting at home i felt like look who you guys actually dropped you know i belong here yeah anybody can be hit for a couple of games and i will i just i don't know what it was in fact i was sitting uh, i was dropped i was sitting at home i vacated the hotel came back home and it was like uh, i deserve better you know i was a part of the 30 uh, squad of the indian team to go for the t20 world cup in 20 uh, 2009 i think i'm not, i might maybe getting it wrong a little bit but yeah uh, tw- sorry 2010 uh, to west indies i'm not wrong so and i was like you left me out and why can't you back me i just the two bad games and you you're not backing me I, i did exceedingly well in the first three games and i was i actually had some uh, issues with steven fleming in terms of saying he didn't have a chat i did i valued him so much he didn't call me and have a chat you know all this sort of thoughts going in and i felt so underdone and i was sitting in the home watching games that csk was playing and telling myself eventually there will come a time where i will turn the tide for csk and making all those sort of promises inside my head and to my family you know that sort of very 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 weird thoughts that going in my head and that feeling is still there ashu because i'm trying to connect a 20 year old with somebody who is now more mature uh, because as you get older i don't know it happens you know you start having self doubts about everything you're not that uh, sort of confident you still have the same thing if you're left out of the squad you still feel you belong there so that has a change see uh, my my belief in in my belief system towards organizations or people might might change you know that's different but in terms of believing that i am the best and i can respond to any situation thrown at me because i believe uh in any situation given the best situation my response towards the situation will be very team oriented rather than being having the self interest and uh i i take a lot of pride in saying i will respond to this situation the best uh when i when my backs are against the wall i have it in me to respond the best and i will have the team's interest at the foremost of my thought these have always remained the fulcrum of how i played my cricket so uh it has never changed uh, maybe the scars uh, can resurface and it can have an impact but i ensure that my scars are washed away by my subconscious training and my mind you know i uh, i may have you know i don't actually you know, connect with cricketers too much because my job can sometimes you know it's it's a difficult relationship being in uh, an opinion industry and you know having opinions of players out there but i may have just sneaked out a little compliment to you just last season where i said well done despite you know what happened because things have changed for you you're not playing all the format you're playing one format and even in that format it's not like a given that you'll play every match So I'm thinking from a very ordinary sort of uh, cricketer's mind sort of point of view, is that when I get that opportunity, there's always this tendency to try too hard and try and make something happen. And I'm watching you very closely from a distance, and you seem very relaxed. I mean, that first test against South Africa, the way you bowled. I mean, you were so relaxed. You bowled. You know, you're patient. You were not trying too many things, and. it was amazing for me to see a man under so much pressure not trying to too hard because that is the first thing that anyone does what that again you know do you want to explain how that is possible because i don't see that sign at all even on the field i don't see you getting upset grumpy or whatever you are calm is that now manufactured is it trained or is something that is, you don't know is happening <laughs> interesting that you asked that question it's it is a it is a very very important game and every game that i play i see it as a very very important game um yeah. intricately inside me sanjay i think it's trained to the fact that right from the first game that i played for india or wherever i played i've considered that to be my last opportunity to play the game uh it's it's so deep driven inside me that uh if i if i happen to pick up three wickets i might be dropped okay it's it's happened at different stages of my career and even if i've bowled well i've been dropped sometimes despite having done well with the bat and ball also i've been dropped and that's uh It, it took me a very long time to accept that bowlers are treated very differently compared to the batsmen, and and I'm not, I I still don't accept with that. But I've understood that that is a reality. Uh, and sometimes there are chances that another cricketer is playing better than you, and you will have to respect that. All these things have gone very deeply and in synchronization with me. But with respect to this game, I think I I went to uh, England and played. I worked extensively on my physical body, and what happened was in Sanjay both in England. South Africa and in Australia when I went on tours I bowled really well and my body let myself down and uh, and worst thing was 
I had taken an opportunity in front of me where we were two one down in England to actually say I am not here a hundred percent, but I want to put this on the line because I have a great yeah. opportunity to make it two all for my country and maybe yeah, go. How crucial was that test match? We were early. I mean, I yeah. was first time I was emotionally involved with a series because I wanted India to beat England because there was, was a, there a was, very good side. There was a very good chance. You know, you could yeah, go yeah. two all and then maybe go three two. And I said, even if my adductors go tatters and we are two all, I would have done the job for the team. and it didn't quite pan out the way i wanted it to pan out it doesn't happen all the time but a very large amount of my career it panned out the way i wanted it to pan out so i do have no regrets about it so uh, it happened so and what excruciated me was when people actually started saying how does it happen when he travels abroad why does it happen when he travels abroad so uh, for a, for a person like me who thinks i am not the most blessed in terms of what i have Uh, but i've made the most you know i i beat this body to an extent where this body is actually telling me now take a break you know and yeah. it's happening it's happened twice and uh, i'm going and thinking okay should i maybe maybe this what this soul wants and what this person wants is completely different from what this body wants at this time i'm trying to i'm trying to like literally make connection with it and people are doubting what i did and so i am thinking inside me so maybe my mental makeup is wrong there have been several times in the past where i've seen cricketers and heard of cricketers who have taken opportunities like this and said no let me take a the safer option here let me sit this out but i have gone out there and told myself and taken pride in myself and said here i am if it works it works if it doesn't work i yeah, take that's that's the only way ashwin because even if the performances don't pan out on the field people around you the contemporaries yeah. in the dressing room will always be sort of <laughs> you know maybe and maybe not we are weighing options yeah. but i'm saying it really hurt me in terms of people talking about the real intent behind a person's injury and uh, a non sporting country like ours is not able to resonate with the fact that injuries are are a comp- part of this game and it's not happened just to me it's happened to a few other cricketers then and there and beyond behind and all that so thinking of this i the only thing that was running in my head was saying i need to get a seat. all of a sudden it's never in my head or my peripheral vision but i thought okay i need to be able to put myself on a park for a series here for the last two three series uh, two series i've been injured and believe it or not there is something right or wrong and i'm not a trainer i'm not well ascertained with physical anatomy of the body so where do i get help here when i'm looking for help the help is very disproportionate everybody has a different theory and yeah. i i go and say okay what did i do back in 2015 14 let me get back to those ways and see if it works that's the final nail in the coffin and i've gone back and i've worked I went to England, put myself on the park. I bowled 30, 35 overs in a day on purpose. Never gave the ball away. Had an extensively good season. Came back to South Africa and said, "Look, boss, it's people that are having an opinion on you. It's not yeah. true. Wherever you've been put up with adversities in life over the last 15 years, you've managed to respond to it and come out successful. You need to start trusting in your abilities." And all this happened because I locked away myself and went to county cricket and played it. When I came back, I was able to easily isolate desperation from what I wanted to achieve. so it was not even in it's my a hard th- thing to do it's hard thing to do do you realize i mean i mean so i mean it happens to everyone isn't it that you just try too hard and in the end you really mess up everything because now when i see every performance it's like you know, it's coming every few weeks sometimes months and sometimes you feel you should be playing you're not playing then you get a chance and you don't get to bowl every time the you know when you want to but that were able to display such patience and calmness is you know brilliant just on foreign condition because that was one of the points that i had written down on home pitches and foreign pitches and that's when i have the issue bowlers have an issue when you are sort of trained in a certain way um excelling in foreign conditions is always going to be tougher for you personally what has been the challenge when you're playing abroad what is the thing that you feel in you know, a wish i had a little more of this and the impact would have been greater uh whatever impact you've had now and it could have been greater if i can do this see one thing sanjay one thing is for sure um yeah i think the first place of start is uh i'm actually fighting my own benchmarks in a lot of ways uh the number of games that i've managed to win for my country and for myself the number of successes i've had the excellence i've shown is always measured up in equal parlance when i travel away from the country which is great and i would like to achieve the same wherever i go first yeah. and increasingly the number of games i played in england i started realizing that for a spinner to be bowling in alien conditions and to be able to repeat similar numbers you need to be bowling in all the possible right times of the game first and secondly you do need a little bit of luck and after 2014 when i had that south africa game i have taken a very serious look at my numbers 
and those numbers have significantly increased very very well yeah, yeah. and it is there are there are opportunities which i've missed and so have batsmen who have nicked off in those opportunities so i feel i am as it is very critical of myself and very very i am a first critic of me and for me i think even i have been a little harsh on myself in those conditions because of uh, seeing what people are talking you know uh, those are those, those are certain cases but one thing which i wish i had and i still the optimist in me will continue to say i don't know when we will get back to cricket if cricket will happen we'll tour abroad what's going to happen i'm not sure but i definitely think my best days are still lying ahead and what i'm exploring here is technical ashwin as to what ashwin needs to do differently when is england is in england or australia south africa is there more body that you need to put in or your mindset has to change what no, no, I'm, ashwin... i'm getting there i'm getting there yeah uh, technically i think i had i had possessed a lot more than what i had in 2014 that's what i was trying to tell you uh the awareness of my bowling i i exactly know what i need to be doing at the bowling crease to be able to get a certain derivative of spin let's say a top spin or a side spin or an arm ball or whatever it is it changes another another contemporary thing that a modern day cricketer finds is the ball this ball is not your friend anymore because it behaves very differently at different conditions because the shape or the specs of the ball are not the same so you're battling all these things so for me technically it's a constant derivative of where i was last time i would always think like that and the sure. first the, the game that i didn't get a wicket in south africa is not the same way i bowled when i went to south africa again i realized what was required the first time when i bowled in australia it was all about trying to spin the ball as much as possible bowl attacking balls it was not the same that i bowled the next year so it is about it's about learning uh, technicality is one side of it which i constantly work tomorrow i wouldn't bowl the same that i'm bowling today i'll make those minor changes but for me it's about learning and to be able to incorporate such that the batsman is never comfortable when i'm bowling or going back what going. about uh, you know physicality of a cricket has become a big thing now with the current captain also you know uh, you can see on instagram uh, even with, you know i find that very funny actors and cricketers they are seen in the gym all the time you know bare chest and uh, whatever so how do you look at the physical aspect of your whole sort of existence as a player is that very important to you do you want to get yes. stronger and yeah 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 of course uh, i would have got that anyway so i think for me as a as a spinner i i have noticed that certain weight scales of me have been more efficient than certain weight scales you know uh, when i've gotten stronger and put on a little when you get stronger you put on a little bit of weight sometimes because you're putting on muscle uh, i have seen performances then i have seen the finish at that point of time i've seen my strength at the crease i've seen my balance so uh, at the top of my head i have these parameters set aside so at this point of time or for even the last 12 months of 18 months it's been about getting as many matches in and trying to manage this weight scale in terms of muscle versus fat index and your weighing scale or whatever can i ask you one thing actually sorry to interrupt uh, you know you look at certain people and they look like they go to the gym every second day when i look at ashwin i look at a guy who is fit bowling you know you've got bowling muscles and everything but you don't look like one of those typical athletes and modern day cricketer that you see a lot is that a conscious thing uh, that you don't want to go beyond a certain level of I don't, you know I don't, I don't i don't put my pictures of training sanjay but if you if you okay. honestly if you honestly ask my trainer he'll tell you uh, okay. i've i've been training twice a day over the last month okay so uh, that's very important to you it is it is very important for me sanjay but the thing is if if i train twice a day and if i have like let's say a cheat meal it will show on the weighing scale by 800 grams the next day so certain certain people certain people are blessed in certain way and i love to take this comparison of myself and jadeja for, for an instance hmm. a blessed cricketer who is completely physically fit and these are all things beyond your control it goes yeah, back to the genetic, dna yeah. it goes back yeah, to the yeah. dna of a person and and billions of years <laughs> so when you look at it the harder i work the more rigid i am the more rudimentary i become is when i have a chance to even stay close to what jadeja is hmm. you know and whereas for somebody like a jadeja he can afford he is a natural cricketer he is a natural bowler he is a natural athlete he is a natural batsman so all that needs to happen for him is to just tick all those connections together in a particular game for me it's beyond all these things i'll have to work 2 3 months earlier to get on parlance to comparative near station with him and that's hmm. exactly why i need to do more thinking than anybody else Mm. on on in terms of having a field and taking accountability for it jadu actually doesn't need to do it because despite all these things he'd be able to land 30 overs on the spot because of this physical state of or physical state.